This is a video for Physics 1607, Auburn University, uh, fall of 2013. We're talking about the cross product, uh, also called the vector product, uh, talking about its definition and some basic applications. Uh, in front of you is the definition of the cross product. Uh, a cross B, the vector A crossed into the vector B, yields a vector um, whose magnitude is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Remember, in our definition of the dot product, it was the cosine, but now at this time it's the sine, and that should tell you something about when this cross product is going to be zero. Uh, and also, we have the most interesting part of this definition is this factor right here, the n hat. This is also what makes this, this product a vector. Uh, n hat is a unit vector, in a normal direction. It's just a standard definition term for a normal direction. When I say the word normal, you should hear that to be uh, perpendicular or orthogonal. Uh, in this case, normal means in a plane, or it, normal to the plane formed by the vectors A and B. If you remember from geometry, any two lines define a plane. The same thing goes for vectors. The vectors A and B, regardless of how they're oriented, will together form a plane. And uh, the cross product, A cross B, uh, is a vector that lies in a direction normal to the plane formed by A and B. As a simple example, you can look below, and uh, forgive the crudeness of this three-dimensional drawing, um, but the idea is you're looking at the XY plane that's sort of been uh, laid down onto its side, and you're looking at it from an angle, and the vectors A and B here, uh, the idea is that they are lying wholly in the XY plane. So they can be both expressed completely in terms of I and I's and J's. And the angle theta is there between them. But if we're going to draw a vector that is normal to both of these, clearly we can't move in the XY direction because then we'd have vector components that are parallel to our vectors A and B. So we have to move in a direction other than X and Y. And of course the only one we have left is Z, like this. So this, what I've drawn, is the vector A cross B. And in this case, there would, that would be defined as A, B, sine, theta, K hat. And all I've done here is I've replaced my general N hat with my specific K hat in this case. Like I said, N is a general term, and if we're in Cartesian coordinates, we're going to be dealing with K hats. But the idea is that it's some vector that's normal or orthogonal to the plane formed by A and B. Now if you consider what this does to our unit vectors, a very interesting thing comes about uh, for calculating the cross product. I'm going to draw on this diagram the vector i hat and the vector j hat. And I'm drawing them both in the positive direction. My positive directions are defined here. So x is going to be positive to the right, y is positive sort of going into the board here, and z is going to be positive going up. So if I cross i into j, let's see what I come up with. Just applying the definition, the magnitude of i is 1, the magnitude of j is 1, the uh, sine of the angle between them, well the angle between them is 90, 90 degrees, so the sine of that is 1. So I, I, my first three terms just are just 1, and then of course I have an n hat here, so this is going to be 1. Now what is my normal direction? Obviously, if I have i's and j's, which are in the x and y direction, the only way I can be normal or orthogonal to those is to move in the k hat direction or the z direction. So I'm going to come up with just a 1 k hat. So we can see immediately that i cross j equals k hat. And all I've done is apply the definition of cross product. Uh, I could apply it again. Let me draw k hat specifically over here. I could apply it again if I wanted to cross j into k. Well, again, I'm just going to get a 1 out of all the magnitudes and the sign of the angle between them. But the only way I can move in a direction normal to j and k is to move in the x direction, or the i hat direction. If you're clever, you might have noticed that I, I could, let me change colors here to make this explicit, I could draw another vector um, that's normal to j and k by drawing it this way. 
it's still totally in the i hat direction but notice i'm moving now in a negative direction uh, the way we determine what direction we move, positive or negative, comes from the right-hand rule, which we'll talk about explicitly in your lab section on, on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, but let me give you a useful device for determining the sign without resorting to the right-hand rule just yet. I'm going to draw a circle made up of I's, I hats, I mean J hats, and K hats. And the circle is going to move counterclockwise and I'm going to label the counterclockwise direction positive let me change colors again and the clockwise direction will be negative and the way this will work is when you're crossing uh, a vector into another you're going to have to come up with uh, something to deal with crossing their unit vectors and in other words if you're crossing uh, 2i plus 3j into something like uh, 4i minus 5j. Well, the magnitudes are easy to handle, but what's going to happen when you have to cross i into j and j back into i? Because you'll have to at some point. Well, it works like this. If you're crossing i into j, notice if I'm looking at the circle moving from i to j, I'm moving in a counterclockwise direction. So i crossed into j as I've written up here, it's going to be a positive k, and I'll write the positive in there for to be explicit. If I'm crossing j into k, again I'm moving counterclockwise, and I've defined that direction as positive. So j cross k uh, is going to give me j to k goes to i. It's going to give me a positive i, and so forth. k crossed into i gives me a positive j, and notice I'm just moving around the circle counterclockwise. If I move around the circle clockwise, I'm going to get a negative answer. So in other words, oh, sorry, one more color change. If I cross I into K, notice I'm now moving around the circle clockwise. So I crossed into K, it's still going to give me a J, but this time it's going to be a negative J, hat. I'm leaving off the hats, but you guys know that they're there. If I cross K into J, Again, I'm moving around the circle counter or, or clockwise. That's going to give me a negative i hat. So again, I'm just anytime you have a, a unit vector crossing another unit vector in the Cartesian coordinate system, your result is going to be in terms of the other unit vector because it's the only way you can move in a, in a direction that's normal to the two you're crossing into each other. And the the, uh, the sign is going to be determined by this nifty little circle that I've drawn you. All right, I'll see you guys on Thursday.